Welcome to Porchlight, a presentation of Porchlight VNA and Home Care, providing top-rate, highly personalized care in the Berkshires and also in the hill towns of Hamden and Hampshire counties, all in the comfort of your own home. And it is winter time here in Western Massachusetts and in the Berkshires, and that means there are a lot of things that people have to think about as it relates to their health, especially for senior citizens. I'm very happy to welcome to the program two people who are very aware of particular issues uh, relating uh, to the winter time here in the Berkshires and Western Massachusetts. We have the Director of Rehabilitation for Porchlight, Lynn Prue, who is here. Welcome to the program, Lynn. It's great to have you back. Nice to be back. Yeah. And Anna Chapman, who is the Director of Clinical Operations. So Hi, Thanks for having us. Both of you welcome, and it is that time of year. You know, uh, it's kind of a joke, uh, not a funny joke, but orthopedic surgeons know that their business uh, skyrockets uh, in the winter time because people are, are falling more often. and, and and so it's something that is just statistically it happens uh, more in the winter time. And also there's another issue, which is COPD, which becomes more of an issue and tends to be in the winter time. So I want to talk about both of those uh, particular issues here in the winter. First of all, uh, COPD, uh, Anna, if you could tell us a little bit about what what is that? Okay. So wh what it is is chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Mm -hmm. So chronic meaning it's never going away. It's always going to be with you. It's um, um, can be in two forms that people are used to talking about, which could be um, bronchitis, which everybody's used to, or emphysema, which is more related to maybe where you worked in the past, um, coal mine people that are around a lot of dust, things like that, tend to have that. It affects not only your lungs, but the bronchioles and all of that. So it makes it difficult for people to breathe. They build up mucus. Um, and the lungs start to get hardening also. So you can imagine, you see the commercials a lot on TV, people saying it feels like there's an elephant sitting on their chest. Mm -hmm. Well, in the winter, because the cold weather comes in, that makes them catch their breath even more so, and it's even more difficult for them to breathe. So we usually say, you know, wrap a scarf around your mouth or something like that to help you rewarm your breath before mm. it goes down into your lungs. That will ease the breathing. And if you have asthma, it would also help with the asthma because then you won't go into those coughing spells that an asthmatic could go into. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, little things like that that we try to teach people mm -hmm. what to do. Um, rest periods, of course, are very necessary with somebody who has COPD and timing of um, things that you do. Maybe you get up in the morning and you don't do like your a regular routine everybody else would do. Mm -hmm. um, you take maybe a shower and then you go and you rest for a while. And then you go back and maybe you dress after. Mm -hmm. You're not going to go full forth and do mm -hmm. it boom, 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 because you won't have any energy left to do those things. And, and that's where Lynn's expertise comes in Lynn a little bit steps in and as out. well, because mm -hmm. you know you sort of have the fact that, okay, so you've been diagnosed with this, and we can probably talk a little bit later about how someone perhaps can uh, realize they, they do have some issues, but they haven't been diagnosed with it, so there are right. some thoughts of you know moving forward and making sure you know, you're seeing your doctor and that sort of thing. But uh, after being diagnosed and you know you have these issues, Lynn, there are techniques that you can sort of follow within the home to make sure that, that you are safe. So what we do at um, Porchlight VNA, we go out, the nurse will admit, then they'll put in a referral for occupational therapy. And as an occupational therapist, we go into this patient's home and assess their um, home, making sure they have every piece of equipment to make their life easier, to minimize um, the stress that it causes on the body and mm -hmm increase their energy conservation. Um, that being maybe throwing in a grab bar in their bathroom, definitely putting in a bath stool so they can sit and perform their um, showering at a seated level because once you're standing, you're burning um, energy mm. so much faster. The water's warm. You lose your um, endurance very, very quickly. Uh, so OT will go out and then we teach them from everything from the equipment they need in the shower to the dressing, which could be adaptive devices such as a long-handled reacher so they don't have to bend over, um, a long-handled shoehorn, a sock aid, um, anything, little tricks like that can really save your energy and then you can utilize your energy to spend time with your family instead of being exhausted because you wanted to shower that day. So. Right, and so someone with COPD is a much different 
story than often we hear about, you know, how are ways that we can burn energy so, you right. know, we can more be more active and, and maybe losing weight and that sort of thing. Someone with COPD, it seems to be the exact opposite. You, you talked yes. about the term, and, and you mentioned it, energy conservation. Correct. So that's the whole philosophy that we're trying to present to someone with COPD. That's exactly right. Um, we're teaching them how to self-pace, how to breathe, and how to do things break in, broken into tasks. Mm -hmm. So you're not going to take a shower and then go run and get dressed and then go make your meal and head out to the store. Mm -hmm. Someone with COPD or any respiratory problems cannot do that. So we teach them to, you know, a lot, a certain amount of time where they have time to rest in between the shower and um, buying a terry cloth robe will help you so you don't have to spend the energy drying your body. You put the robe on, then you go rest, have your coffee, read the newspaper, give your body the time to recover, and then process into the, the dressing. Mm -hmm. And then you'll rest after dressing, mm -hmm. and you know, it's all about just breaking it into little tasks instead of, mm -hmm. it's not overwhelming. Where, yeah, and so there's a, there's a pacing to it and that you're able to, able to enjoy a certain quality of life uh, right. because, and just do it at a certain pace as opposed to uh, getting uh, too tired and then you're in the middle of something and then you do fall or you have an right. episode uh, perhaps. And, and, and uh, Anna, you know, what, what is the kind of, uh, sort of issues that do come up with uh, COPD? You mm -hmm. know, you have... Uh, well, is you it, have weakness and you're tired because you know, the, your blood isn't oxygenated mm -hmm. as well as, you know, normal pre people would be. You, you have, you know, um, a cough. You could have a chronic cough, and that's very tiring. Just imagine when you've got a cold right. and you're coughing, coughing, coughing. You know, it's exhausting and you're mm -hmm. not sleeping well. Sometimes they have to have themselves propped up with quite a few pillows so they feel they can breathe. Sometimes we even have them put their uh, bed legs on built-up things so their head is more elevated so they can breathe properly. Mm -hmm. They have periods of, um, you know, fevers and chills and things like that, and that's something we teach them to watch for because you don't want to go into an attack where then it ends you in the hospital and you're being on IVs and IV antibiotics. So we teach them things to look for, their families things to look for, mm -hmm. you know, is to watch your, your, that you don't get a fever. If you start to get a fever, call your doctor right away. Mm -hmm. You know, drink fluids as long as you're not restricted. Keep the fluids there so that'll keep you, you know, well hydrated. Eat five to six small meals a day instead of big meals. Spread those meals out. It takes less energy to eat mm -hmm. smaller meals. Plus, if you eat a big meal, your stomach sits here, your diaphragm's there, so your stomach's kind of pushing up on your diaphragm, which yeah. is making it even harder to mm -hmm. to breathe. Mm -hmm. So a lot of those type of things is uh, what we go out and talk about. Plus, the medications. Big thing is making sure they take their medications properly. Um, I know. A respiratory therapist will go out and talk about how to use their updraft machines or things like that so that they're getting the medicine delivered correctly mm -hmm. so that it doesn't sit just at the front of your tongue but it's going all the way yeah. down into your lungs. It's interesting you know you look at uh, our uh, home care agency VNA and, and, and home care and you know we talk about different uh, types of services being provided you know could you give me an idea of, of the percentage of how many or what percentage of, of our patients uh, have COPD is that is that a significant number? Uh, well the funny thing is a lot of people don't even realize sometimes that they have it or mm. it might start off as like a chronic cough and mm -hmm and it doesn't go away, and then you go and you see the doctor, and maybe you have asthma, maybe that's one of them, or maybe they do some lung function tests and they find out you do have this problem, and so then, you know, you learn to live with it and you find out what you can do to make it better so that you have a productive, you know, healthy life. Mm -hmm. um, the percentage is hard to say because there's so many people that just don't realize they, they mm. ha might have a history of this. You mm. know, they just woof it off as, no, I've got this cough that never seems to go away. Mm. Right. But yeah. if you, but I, perhaps as a key indicator, if you have a cough that never seems to go away. Mm -hmm. you seek, uh, your, seek medical uh, advice. You know, seek, you know right. because uh, now are there medications? Are there things there that are, can there's help treat? There's a lot of bronchodilators mm -hmm. that they can take. You know, there's, um, you know, we give them what we call the nebulizer. It's a machine where they breathe in mm -hmm. and it delivers it right into their lungs. And mm -hmm. so there are a lot of different types of medications. There, there's side effects to those medications too. A lot of, uh, you know, people will complain sometimes of feeling jittery mm -hmm. or, you know, um, anxiety. Something. Mm -hmm. 
COPD patients tend to be more anxious, but that's because they have a difficulty time breathing. Mm -hmm. So if you can't breathe, you're going to get right. anxious. And it's so all kind of vicious cycle. It's a vicious cycle. And that's that where aspect. we all come in, Lynn and the nurses. Mm -hmm. and, you know, we all come in to do that teaching, those relaxation yeah. techniques. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe you get uh, music that you listen to and do those deep breathing exercises. Maybe it's just... Um, some sort of relaxation technique that you've been taught by someone else that's been through it in a support group. So, mm -hmm. you know, that's what you try to do with mm -hmm. them. What works best, it does, the same doesn't work for each person. You right. have to individualize it and see what's going to work for that person. And so the the winter is extra difficult because you know mm -hmm. people who are you know who have COPD you know mm -hmm. there's that weakness and then of course for those in particular uh, who have that you know, weakness you know it could lead to things like falls. I mean mm -hmm. it's it's a risk for everyone. Mm -hmm. It's sure. a risk for you know people you know my age or people who are uh, older what have you and uh, there's ice out there and that sort of thing. So there's there's a lot of risk during the winter time right. so you know as far as the the falls aspect Lynn um, you know we, we as we mentioned we, we see it because the emergency room visits uh, increase That's dramatically true. and the orthopedic surgeons are more busy so what are some of the things that people ought to think about uh, as they are uh, out there in the winter time with ice and snow well and, and I these think things? if they um, if it is incredibly bad weather stay home mm -hmm. however if you do use um, and you need to go out and you have a device such as a cane they sell ice tips that you can put on so it's a little mm -hmm. spike that you just attach yeah. to your cane so when you're walking on the icy um, roads or what have you mm -hmm. you have that stability um, always go with a friend be yeah. smart, um, have something or someone to hold on to. Mm -hmm. You want to take your time, you want to, you know, um, think smart and. Yeah. We can fend people off with that, too. Well, you could. Could you? Yeah. Um, Especially during but, the holiday time, holidays. How, how sharp shopping. is that? How sharp is that spike? Um, so that's interesting. So, you know, would, where would people get something like that? You can that? buy them now. They sell them at Walmart. Okay. They sell them at any, um, like, okay. Flint's Pharmacy, any right. pharmacy. A lot of locally owned places, that's I'm sure, yes. uh, sell those as well. Uh, um, you know, not just Wally World. But, um, that's but, <laughs> but that's that's a good point. Um, and, yes, uh, Flint's Pharmacy. Pharmacy is great. So um, that's one thing to think about is yeah. that always have a buddy, uh, you know, helping you to different appointments or what have that's you. That's right, especially um, if you're an older person, you mm -hmm. know, make sure that you call somebody and say, I've got to go out today mm -hmm. and the roads are icy or the sidewalk's icy. Mm -hmm. Can you come with me? Can you help me get to the car or the bus, whatever, wherever mm -hmm. they're going? Mm -hmm. So that there is somebody there. So if you do, God forbid, fall, you know, at least somebody's there to help you or to mm -hmm. call for help, then mm -hmm. you're not stranded somewhere for a couple of hours by yourself. Mm -hmm. That's a terrible position yeah. for an older person to be in. Yeah, other things to think <clears throat> about uh, as it relates to being prepared uh, right. if you do well, have to go Well, we tell our staff, our visiting staff, to always have like kitty litter in the trunk of their car. Yeah. I mean, you know, there's a commercial on TV now that they show them they throwing do. the kitty litter around. And, but yeah. it's true. We've used that for years, the mm -hmm. kitty litter in the trunk of the car. Mm -hmm. Newspaper, if you've got icy steps, if you put newspaper down as you're walking up the step, believe it or not, that will adhere to the ice and it will prevent you from slipping. Mm -hmm. A lot of times the only way we can get into people's homes is by going up their stairs. We do ask and kind of require that if we're going to visit you, you have a clear pathway for us. So right, naturally. our staff doesn't get injured. But again, if you come up upon that, you know, just keep stuff with you so that you can mm -hmm. get to it quick and get, you know, to the place where you need to get without falling. Hmm. And then um, <coughs> you have a whole falls prevention program mm -hmm. um, yes, that we, uh, we did this past year and uh, you go out to different community locations uh, mm -hmm. to provide that, uh, some more extensive and then right. some shorter programs as mm -hmm. well. Um, but, you know, what, what are some uh, techniques that people can do to strengthen, and balance is a big aspect too. So, you know, you throw ice into the mix, it, it becomes uh, extremely right. complex, Lynn, but, um, but generally speaking, uh, balance is a key thing. So what are some things that people can do? Well, I think to you first want to know your balancing point. Mm -hmm. What, How far can I challenge myself before I'm going to lose my balance? And you should know that. Mm -hmm. um, as therapists, we do standardized tests, and we measure several different things, and we 
let them know what their balancing point is. So some people can only reach six inches and then they're going to fall over. So if you're trying... So what do you mean by the balancing point? So well, six when inches? You're, yeah, if you're standing and say I was going to try to put a glass away mm -hmm. and instead I'm going to just hold on to the counter and I'm going to reach if my balancing point is only six inches and I reach eight inches, chances are I I'm see. gonna fall over. Okay. Um, so it's the tipping point. It's the tipping point. It, literally, That's, literally. Yes. So I mean, so and you a know, lot of people, which, instead of using their energy, especially the COPD patients, they would rather just you know overstretch and exert themselves once instead of moving their feet right. a couple inches. Right. So they're even at greater risk. So it is. you know, it's like you're always doing sort of this cost-benefit analysis yeah, as you're going yeah. through. Like you said, you know, it'll take a few more steps, which takes energy and makes them more right. tired. But if you do the longer reach, you could you're you gonna, could have the fall and have probably severe consequences from that so you know it's all about learning you know what your range is and then improving on that mm -hmm. by gentle exercising it's great to get a good program which we can establish in their homes for them and we slowly build up their endurance so one week they might only be able to do five repetitions and in two weeks they can do 10 repetitions mm -hmm. without the gross fatigue that we would normally see out of them. Mm -hmm. So we're teaching them how to breathe while they're building their endurance and their mm -hmm. balancing skills. And um, then they feel more confident. Um, you'll see their anxiety level go down. And that's very important because when people become stressed and they can't breathe, they become very short of breath. And then they can't catch their breath. So they mm -hmm. end up really... <sighs> And then they get more anxious, and then they're taking less, less breath in, mm -hmm. and then their muscles are fatiguing, their respiratory muscles fatigue quickly, mm -hmm. and it's just a vicious cycle, and then they're full-blown having an anxiety attack. Mm -hmm. And um, so we go out there and teach them, it's okay, this is what we're going to do. We're going to learn how to breathe before we do anything else, mm -hmm. and just try to keep them um, with a low stress level. And it's hard this time of year because people especially the elderly who have to go to a doctor's appointment and they see that it's freezing rain, they get worked up two days beforehand <laughs> and mm. they get nervous. How am I going to get there? Right. So that's already starting. That already adds to the anxiety. Yeah. It's, it's amazing how and it's, the mind works yes. uh, as well in this whole thing and being yeah. able to sort of be calm and breathe uh, it's is, is... It's a it retraining is. process. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, when I worked acute rehab, we'd, we'd get COPD patients there, and mm -hmm. it was a total retraining process because mm -hmm. they were the type of patient that would always be pressing the light because they right. wanted you there immediately. Mm -hmm. And so you sometimes would have to set up a contract with them actually to say, you're going to call me in an hour if you need me. Otherwise, don't push the button, right. you know, right. and I will be here in one hour, guaranteed. Mm -hmm. I will be here to check on you. Mm -hmm. And it's so they have to retrain themselves to calm that anxiety level down so mm -hmm. that they mm -hmm. don't get over anxious and then they don't mm -hmm. put it into that cycle where they can't breathe. Mm -hmm. so and it's, it's interesting, difficult. you know, looking yeah. at, at Porchlight and, you know, and there is so much involvement in the community, you know, doing presentations, um, but also doing things that are uh, going above and beyond uh, as it relates to the clinical excellence that we have, you know, having a nurse practitioner, you know, on staff, mm -hmm. having different specialists who come in, that sort of thing. Um, not every agency does that, and I think that's important to recognize mm -hmm. that, you know, as a nonprofit dedicated to the community, and a porch light does a lot of this extra work we working do. with the departments mm -hmm. of health, you mm -hmm. know, on mm -hmm. certain things, not just right. flu clinics and, and right. that sort of thing, but, but a lot of that, it's all within the mission. Teaching, a lot of teaching. We go out into the community, do a lot of in-services. If, if someone calls us and says, can you come out and talk about, you know, COPD? Mm -hmm. Lynn and I would gladly go and do a little in-service for, mm -hmm. you know, whoever the audience is. If someone asks, can you come out and talk about heart failure? Yes, we do. Mm -hmm. you know, anything that anybody ever asks of us, we're more than willing to research it if we don't mm -hmm. have all the information and mm -hmm. make it happen so that the community remains yeah. educated. Yeah, yeah. And, that, and that's so important. I think mm -hmm. now 
more than ever, people are recognizing that health education and preventative maintenance, essentially, yes. uh, is so much, uh, well, it's, it's very important, um, almost uh, as important as the care you provide right. and, and receive uh, when you are not feeling, when you are not feeling so good, right. when you're sick and, mm -hmm. and you have uh, health issues. Um, and and, it's harder uh, to learn then, too, when you're sick because you're yeah. just focusing on trying get, to get over that get me illness, better, yeah. you know? Right. So if we can do uh, teaching prior, mm -hmm. if this happens, this is what you should do. Well, like, we give this to our patients. It's a mm -hmm. kind of a green, yellow, red mm -hmm. scenario. So if you're in the green, this is what, you know, mm -hmm. you're fine. You're and we can go good. through that. So, right, so um, you're fine. So your breathing is good. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the, if you're coughing up stuff, it's white, it's clear, mm -hmm. it's not yellow. Um, we got to analyze that phlegm. Right, exactly. It's important. Exactly. But you have to because you they have to stay on top of it. Because that's thing. one of the things that can change yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. And then they're ill. And mm -hmm. then they're in the hospital. Mm -hmm. So, yellow, then maybe you want to call the nurse, mm -hmm. you know, and let her know something's going on. So, this is when you have shortness of breath. Yeah, short, yeah. You, um, yeah, a little bit of changes, you know, mm -hmm. in your cough, it's more, per, you know, you're feeling like it's tighter, mm -hmm. not a productive cough. We like a productive cough. A productive cough is one where you're getting, getting this stuff, stuff out. out. Yeah, okay. And when you start to tighten up, and then you know you're starting to have some issues. Yeah. Interesting, interesting. Yeah. Okay. And maybe you'll see a little weight change, mm -hmm. and you start to see that temperature, too. So you yeah. want to watch out for that temperature, okay. and you're tired. You're just feeling more tired, right? Yeah. And then get out of this danger zone. We don't want you in there at all mm -hmm. because that's when you get the severe shortness of breath. You just feel like you can't breathe at all, mm -hmm. you know, and, and you're so f afraid that your anxiety mm -hmm. level increases, mm -hmm. then you're breathing. It's just that cycle, you mm -hmm. know, you just can't break loose of that. Mm -hmm. And the that's chest pain, and yeah. you're feeing faint, yeah. and, and definitely more. And, and, and really, I mean, when you feel really, really tired, you're going to call the doctor. Yeah, you're, you know, you're going to yeah. call us and say, "What do I need to do?" We're going to call the doctor. If you can't, we're going to call the doctor. We're going to send somebody out. If our nurse practitioner is there and available, we're going to ask her to go out because she can quickly mm -hmm. make an assessment and see. Call the, you know, call the primary physician. Can we get them on an antibiotic? Try to break that cycle mm -hmm. before it gets to the point where they end up in the hospital. It's very interesting uh, and again knowing that there are people out there who probably have this condition and are not aware of it or you know have not you know followed through and, and that's one of the things that um, is helpful here on the program here today mm -hmm. to have people think about that um, mm -hmm. not to you know uh, not to make them think that oh, everything I've got that. yeah right. uh, yeah but just, you know, you know uh, an awareness <laughs> yeah. an awareness of, of things awareness because again you know being proactive mm -hmm. with it uh, right. will enable you to be uh, and, and just like in the area of, of occupational therapy a lot of it is education and understanding sure. and these are tips that uh, those who are seniors or or really anyone uh, Lynn can follow through as far as you know being safe and you know being measured with right. the way that you approach things um, and sometimes you know whether it's just going down the stairs at night you know yes. and, and and you know being certainly careful that you're holding the rail and and, uh, and have a and night light have a night light <laughs> and, and make sure you have some grip on on you know the socks that you have mm -hmm. or That's don't wear socks true. or whatever whatever it may be those some of it seems like common sense but but often but because we don't think about these things so much yeah, we take it for granted because mm -hmm. when you're independent you're independent and you mm -hmm. never think that you're gonna have an issue but as mm -hmm. we age and or we have an injury we realize geez life can change just like that you know mm -hmm. so it's good to think smart um, if anybody ever had any questions uh, you can feel free to call the agency and ask for myself, and I can always talk to anybody over the phone and, you know, figure out what we can best do to help them. Sometimes the simplest little device or just talking to somebody can really change somebody's um, ability to stay home and stay safe. And uh, you do, with, uh, Anna, you mentioned, uh, do these presentations out in the community. so. We are a resource uh, mm -hmm. to to people. How can uh, people get in touch with with you, Anna, um, and learn more? Either right. for, to have a presentation mm -hmm. uh, for a group, whether it's at the senior center or at, at some different uh, organization that, that may want it, um, or just for a regular consultation, just a, right. a discussion. How right. can people get in touch? Well, they with you? can call the office, the Porchlight VNA at 
243-1212. They can ask for, if it's just a general question, I'm having this type of an issue, they can just call and ask for one of the clinical managers. There's mm -hmm. three of us in the office, so if one of us is out, one of us is always in. Mm -hmm. So that's a good place to start. If it's wanting one of our in-services, then they would call me, mm -hmm. and we could look and see what we could set up for them and talk about all of that. And fantastic. It's easy and by the way, how long have both of you worked for Porchlight? I've been there for, it'll be 11 years Holy in June. Cow. 11 years. I was just a baby when I started. That's a great, <laughs> it's a great place to work there, Porchlight. An, and Anna, I know, the uh, best. maybe not quite as long as Not quite years, as long, but, no, but uh, I'm halfway there. <laughs> halfway there. Well, that's that's pretty significant. Mm -hmm. So it's great, and, um, and uh, it's great to see you two again. And thanks so much for all your work, and happy holidays. You and, too. And Thank you, Tom. Happy and very safe holidays. Right. Right. I hope we uh, were able to help contribute to that uh, for our viewers uh, today. So, Anna, thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. Perfect. Much. Thank you, John. It's great seeing you. Happy holidays again. And Thanks. this has been Porchlight, a presentation of Porchlight VNA and Home Care. I'm John Kroll. Have a great day.